Good morning, YouTubers. Uh, just about to do the valve clearances today on the uh, Suzuki GSF-1250 Bandit. Um, you will need to remove the petrol tank uh, to gain access to this area. And um, you've also gonna have to, we're going to have to remove this thermostat. So we're going to have to drain some of the coolant out, um, partially drain it. You've got a water pump down underneath the back of this cover here with a, a bleed screw on it so we can put a container underneath and uh, and just drop a little bit of, of coolant out the system low enough to be able to remove this without having coolant going everywhere. Um, I put together a little sheet with uh, all the relevant information I need for the in exhaust and intake valves, uh, all the clearances so I can record all the data and anything that's out of spec then I can take a look at the shims and um, and then recalculate the new shims to be replaced. I've got my Haynes Suzuki Bandit manual which is invaluable for doing a job like this and uh, we'll go to the next stage then. Right, got the casing removed, and there's your water pump, and there's the bleed screw that I was talking about. I'll get that undone in a minute, and uh, we'll just lose a, a little bit of the coolant into a container underneath. Red cap removed, and this is before I'm doing the drain plug. And there she is now. You can actually see the thermostat inside the housing. Right, that's all the hoses loosened and that's the thermostat housing removed which will give us a little bit more access to the top of the rocker cover. Just going to remove the PAIR system. That's the solenoid, and just got to disconnect this electrical connector. I've undone the hoses, and that's all ready to go. And now that's out the way. The next step is to remove the coils. I've removed all of the coils and um, the spark plugs are still in there 
but I shall have a, um, a tidy out in that area just to make sure there's no dust or debris before I remove the spark plugs when I'm ready to start to rotating the engine to take the valve readings. I've hung the electrical connectors for the coils over the side there out the way and uh, that's the PAR uh, tube that goes back to the air box. Um, there's me right hand engine casing that's got to come off uh, next to give me access to the end of the crank so that I can rotate the uh, camshafts to, to give me the desired readings. That's the rocker cover removed and uh, not a lot of room to, to get that out of there to be honest with you. I had to remove the PAIR reed valves on top of the uh, rocker cover housing which made it a bit easier for getting it out but even so not a lot of room in there as you can imagine. But uh, anyway we're on to the next stage which will be um, taking some readings on uh, each individual valve and recording the, the measurements. Right, the next step is I'm going to loosen the spark plugs just to uh, make turning the engine over a little bit easier. Um, Suzuki provide two of these spark plug spanners in your toolkit and uh, this is the shorter one of the two. But now I've got the rocker cover removed, it's, uh, it's absolutely perfect for doing this job. So I shall just drop that into the hole and uh, using a 14mm spanner or socket on the top there I should just undo that a couple of turns or so uh, I'll leave the spark plug in place but that will enable me to um, ensure that nothing drops down where it shouldn't do in those holes and, uh, and of course uh, makes the job easier for turning the engine over register on the crankcase uh, bolt are lined up with the, the marker shown in that photograph. You've rotated the engine to a position where you have two cutouts on the right hand side of the camshafts and when uh, the intake camshaft is at six o'clock and the exhaust camshaft is at two o'clock you uh, check your clearances on um, cylinders number one and two, sorry, one and three intake valves and one and two exhaust valves. As there's four valves per cylinder, two per intake and two per exhaust, when I refer to them as one, two, three and four, naturally you're going to measure intake valves 1 and 2 for cylinder 1, 3 and 4 for cylinder 2, 5 and 6 for cylinder 3, 7 and 8 for cylinder 4 and so on. Right, that's the first stage measured and uh, recorded. I've just rotated the crankshaft uh, bolt there through a full 360 degrees back to the same marks as I did the first time and now the camshafts have changed position you've got the intake cut out is at 12 o'clock and you've got the yeah, exhaust cam lobe cut out is at 8 o'clock and then we'll proceed to measure 
the uh, clearances on um, the number two and number four cylinder intake valves, number three and number four cylinder exhaust valves. And we'll record those measurements as well. I found it easier to uh, strip the uh, feeler gauges out of the, the pack that they come in into singles and that way it was easier to access the valve clearances uh, as a single or, or even if I had to pair them up and add two together to get the desired measurement. I found that worked really well for me. Uh, recorded the measurements at the first stage, rotated the engine through 360 and um, and I'm now going to complete the second stage and record the measurements. Right, that's all of the valve clearances recorded and uh, they're all in spec, both the intake and the exhaust valves, which I'm delighted with. Now that I've done the shims, I thought I'd take advantage of the fact that I've got my spark plugs nice and loose to take each one out just uh, check the gaps on them and uh, put some copper grease back around there they look nice and healthy and, uh, and put them back in saves uh, doing the job again later